Are you a saint today? Or are you living your life today? Neither filthiness nor foolish talking. Hey, brother, did you hear this joke? Uh oh. God don't like jokes. You might say something humorous and it'd be funny. But just to deliberately tell somebody something, God may not like that. He said, put it away. Nor foolish jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater, have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Uh oh. All these people who have this main worship will not enter into the kingdom of God. That's according to God's word. Let no man deceive you. Listen. You take the scripture that I give you, write it down, and go check it out for yourself. Don't depend on what I say. I might accidentally tell you a lie. And a lot of people are taught lies from the beginning of their ministry, and that's all they know. Man, I can't work on trigonometry because I've never done any of it. You, you, you might as well not depend on me telling you how to do it. Let no man deceive you with vain words, words that do not profit. Please. Don't be deceived. For because of these things, the wrath of God on the children of disobedience. Saints, there is coming a day that Yahweh is going to pour out His wrath upon this earth. He's going to burn it up. And He's going to create a new heaven and a new earth. Where only the righteous will. Hallelujah. The saints need to imitate Jesus. We need to go back to the beginning of the miracles that Jesus did at that wedding supper where his mother said, Whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Hallelujah. If, if we just had what Jesus said to do and didn't, we would be fine. Because he said, I always do those things that please my Father. I do nothing of myself, but what the Father tells me, that I do. Yes. Therefore, we'd have to go back into what we call the Old Testament and find out what the Father said. And then do it. Amen. Imitate Jesus. Somebody asked me about religion the other day, and I said, Jesus. <laughs> you can't have Jesus as a religion. I said, yeah, I can. I am Jesus. That's who I am. Because he's in me. And he has changed me into his life. My Bible tells me as he is, so am I in this world. Hallelujah. Our religion is Jesus and his word. Galatians 4, 10, and 11. Ye observe days, months, time, years. Oh, what's your birthday? I gotta find out your holy school. Oh, you better not go outside today. <laughs> Trouble's coming your way. Why don't you just stick to the word of God and pray? That was what the Bible study was today. The word, prayer. If you do those things, you don't have to worry about the horoscope. Because ain't no horror coming your way. It'll be on the outside, on the left, and on the right, but it will not come now. You're dwelling my Bible tells me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You might kill this body, but you can't kill who I am. Because I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I am complete in Him who's the head of all things. Even Christ Jesus our Lord. And that, my friends, is not vain. Hallelujah. 
I'm afraid of you. Why? Because you observe days, months, years, and times. Lest I have bestowed upon you labor in vain. Jesus came and he labored. I want you to know he labored. When he prayed and the sweat came out of him like drops of blood, I want you to know that's labor. Colossians, second chapter, eight verse, beware. To pay attention. Listen, people, pay attention. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceits after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. It's okay to do this. God won't mind. My dad one time was uh, sitting up on top of a house. He was moving it, building the house and what he was doing. Had a piece of plywood, and it didn't even have as deep a slant on it as this poker. <laughs> this rust. And a couple of kids out there, he said, God won't mind me telling them this joke. Why the chicken crossed the road. He said there wasn't a breeze anywhere. He said all of a sudden that piece of plywood that he was sitting on left the house like a flying car and landed flat down. Saul still in him. He said, I guess God does mind. <laughs> Because normally when a piece of plywood falls off the house, it gets on its edge. I mean, it just left it and set it down just like that. It didn't hurt. You might be able to do something, anything, but when you add God to it and he's not in it, he don't like it. You see, it's vain. And he don't have anything to do with vain things. First Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable in the work of the Lord. Be ye steadfast, unmovable in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You've got a reward coming. Because you came to the Sabbath service. You've got a reward coming because you paid tithe and offering into the ministry. You've got a reward coming because you didn't eat unclean meats. You have a reward coming because you don't tell lies. Because you don't lay with another man's wife. Because you don't steal. Because you don't kill. You have a reward in doing those things that are right. And that reward comes from Yahweh. And when you do those things that are wrong, you also have a reward coming. But it's not a reward that any man should desire. James 2.20 Will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? If you say you love your wife and you stay out party all night, don't come home. Don't buy her the things she needs for the house. Don't buy her the clothes she needs for her body. Never hug her neck. Never give her a kiss. Sleep in another house somewhere else. Do you think she thinks she loves you? Do you love her? I don't think so. She's going to begin to think that man lying to me. 
He don't love me. He loves himself. And that's where the world is today, is they love themselves. What's in it for me? Make me feel good, look good, smell good. Watch out. Question. Are you willing to know? Are you willing to know? What truth is? Are you willing to know? Are you doing it right? That's why you come to church. You know, sometimes because the, the teaching and preaching, they can help kind of get you stirred in the right direction. Well, if you're not willing to get no, you don't go. You don't come. First Peter 1, 16 through 18. It is written. Pay attention to these things. It is written. Be ye holy. For I am holy. You know, if we really could stop and say, what would Jesus do before we did something? It might make a lot of difference in our life. When I worked at the highway department years ago, guys were always trying to get me to smoke a cigarette, tell a joke, or listen to their joke. And I stopped one day and I said, are y'all Christians? Yeah, we go to church every Sunday. I said, if Jesus was standing here in my place, would you offer him your cigarette? Would you tell him your joke? Hello? We got to live our life as though we're standing in front of Jesus because we all. Be ye holy, for I am holy, and if you call on the Father, whom thou respect a person, judges according to every person's, or every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. Not in being afraid or cowardly, but in hating you. God wants you to pass your time in hating the evil and loving the good. And he's the only thing that's good. Everything else is evil. For as much as you know that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your own conversation, received from the traditions from your fathers. Your fathers didn't save you. The church don't save you. The preacher don't save you. Yahweh does. Amen. And that's through the blood of his son Jesus. Psalm 119. Verse 113. I hate vain thoughts. But thy law do I love. You know why it's important to love the law of God? Because it's what keeps you from failing, from coming up short, from being vain in your worship of our Heavenly Father. It's our roadmap. It's our textbook. It's what helps us to know who we are. It helps us to know how we are to live. In closing, in Proverbs, the 30th chapter, verses 7 through 9, it says, Two things have I required of thee. Deny me not, death before I die. This would be a good prayer for you and I. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Heavenly Father, remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. 
lest I be fool and I be as a principle. You know, when you sit down to eat, some people will turn and thank you before they eat. The Bible says, after you eat, and you're full. Praise the Lord. With a good lady. Do you think about that? Every word that comes out of the mouth of God is a commandment to us to do. After you have eaten and you're a fool, praise be for the good land. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful that I live in the United States, that I have all the blessings that I have. I'm thankful for hot, cold running water, for indoor plumbing, for a nice tub and shower, because I remember being without it. Lest I be fool and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of the Lord my God in vain. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For you to be a saint to, and to steal will be taking Yahweh's name in vain. He's not so much concerned about you saying the words God damn it. You know what that means? What you're doing when you say God damn it is you're saying God stop this. Because that's what a damn does. It holds up or it stops something. And unless you're one of his, he ain't going to do it. Joshua said, son, be still, and it stood. Elijah said, don't rain, and it didn't rain. There will not be rain, as I say so. Have we got there yet, saints? We need to get there. We need to start praying for that latter rain, that, that double portion to come out. Have you been praying for the faith that was once delivered to the saints? If you're not doing that, you need to start praying for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. So that others might see signs following you. Hello? So that the service that you serve young will not be in vain. That others might see that you are of the king. A godly seed. Holy and acceptable unto you. Cleanse your heart. Renew your mind. By the written word of God. Let it ever be before your eyes. Parents, you've got children. Begin to read to them every day, at least once a day, the word. Start with Genesis 1 and read the whole book. You're feeding them from the table of Yahweh. Now, I understand they may not understand it, but that's okay. There will come a day that the word that enters the ear will enter the heart. Hello? You take your babies and you set them up at your table to eat. They have power. But every once in a while, you give them a little bit of taters. You give them just a, a, a little bone to suck on. Give them the word of God and let them suck on that. <laughs> Woo! Let them learn how to read from the word. Let it be that which they see, that which they hear. Teach them how to pray. Teach them how to tag. Teach them how to reverence the Sabbath. Teach them how to reverence the house of prayer. Now that, my friends, is not faith. That's something. I don't want to harp on the season so much. But don't teach them a lie. Teach them the truth. Because the truth will set you free. May the Lord bless you. Thank you.